Welcome everybody to the next um, issue of CFO Inside TV. I'm very happy to welcome you all as our guests again. And I'm also very happy to welcome Stefan Meister. Thank you. CEO of Partners Group based in Switzerland, um, a private equity company um, that, or private equity firm that invests um, all over the world. I think you have 27 billion euros under management at the moment. Um, but you can expand on that in a minute. Welcome, Mr. Meister. Thank you. Um, as I just said, um, maybe for means of introduction, if you just briefly um, tell us exactly what Partners Group is doing, because you define yourself not as a pure private equity fund. That's correct. We are an asset management company. We invest, as you said, about 27 billion euro. Uh, we invest in private companies. That's the private equity part. But we also invest money in real estate assets, outside capital markets, in infrastructure assets, and we uh, provide uh, credit financing to such assets. Um, but as you said, that is all in private markets. So um, why exactly do you consider private markets to be better places for investment than public markets? Well, you see, I think there's a couple of advantages. One is when we invest in a private company, we tend to have a, a much larger set of information available to make our initial analysis of the actual company's merits. Um, as we are investing in the company, we also have, through our board seats, through our large control holdings, a much better ability to influence the management team. And I think thirdly, it's fair to say that is more long-term focus, and as such, I think um, we're less constrained by short-term mindset and thinking and can really develop the strategy of the firm in the best interest in the long run. When you say you have more influence on the board and, and through the ownership, what would you say are the biggest challenges that your investments, um, especially in companies, not so much in, in, the, in the other private markets, but in terms of companies that you invested in, what are the biggest challenges and are there differences in the regions that you're invested in? Yeah. Well, of course, every company has its own challenges and there's always challenges also in the private markets. Um, I would say a fundamental difference between the developed markets and emerging markets is still um, a certain lack of professionalism when it comes to reporting of financial matters or due diligence, the corporate governance. In the emerging That's markets. in the emerging markets <laughs> as opposed to developed markets. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean that we don't face challenges also in the developed world. Um, often we experience that with the management teams that we find. Um, we find it difficult. We have maybe to replace some people in the management team. Mm -hmm. Um, so the nature is a bit different, but I would say, of course, in both situations, you do find challenges. Have you changed your, your allocation um, in terms of assets and companies you invest in due to the euro crisis? Uh, there was certainly an influence. I would maybe not necessarily say that we have uh, changed a region allocation as a whole fundamentally, but uh, for instance, if you look at consumer type of businesses in Southern Europe, then of course, I mean, they are affected by the sentiment in Spain, in Portugal, in Italy, and these will be areas we'll be very, very careful to invest. Having said that, also in Europe, I mean, we find a lot of very interesting businesses in uh, Northern Europe, even sometimes in Southern Europe, in companies that are cash rich that have maybe also more of an infrastructure type of business, so less maybe constrained by actual um, uh, economic uh, situation. There, there's, a, there's a lot of liquidity, liquidity in the markets going around, sloshing around, really. Mm -hmm. And I think you're, you're looking at your website um, your assets under management grew from about 20 billion just less than two years ago to more than 27 billion now, if I understand correctly. Um, so do you find um, enough interesting opportunities to invest all this additional money? Well, the um, investment opportunities are always a starting point. And before we actually raise a new fund, we will always uh, look at the actual set of investment opportunities and make an estimate how much we can invest in a reasonable amount of time in the quality assets that we look for. Um, so looking at the last uh, 12 months, we invested about $5.6 billion over the last 12 months. I think that's a reasonable run rate. Uh, we do find these investments. Um, we are very active in, in an area in what we call the middle market, enterprise values between 100 million and a billion. That is um, not so much sought after by some of the very large funds. That is often not so much affected by liquidity that the corporates have at the moment. And I think that gives us a certain benefit that we find consistently the deal flow that we look for. Mm. Now, you just said quality assets. Um, what would define a quality asset? 
and let's say within Europe, what would mm -hmm. a CFO of a company have to do to become uh, a quality asset uh, that you might invest in? Well, it's probably not just the CFO that has to do a certain amount of work, but um, and of course, there's very different business, but let me give you one example. Um, a company that which is what were recently called Global Blue, you might have heard about that company before. It's a VAT refunding services, so it's a financial sector company, very specialized, uh, technology-based. And uh, it's a typical company we like because they're operating in a niche. They have a quite a high market share. They're very, very cash flow rich. And I would say these are all ingredients that as a starting point we like. Secondly, it's a company because it's benefiting from VAT refund services. It's growing a lot actually with the growth of the consumer, the middle class in China, in India. So if you want, there's an indirect effect on that company through that growth of emerging markets, despite the fact that the company itself is actually a European company. Mm -hmm. So I would say that's a typical example of a company that we like a lot. Okay. There's a lot of secondary deals in the market at the moment, much more than primary ones, if mm -hmm. I understand correctly. Are these usually more or less attractive or well to be honest a little bit of both I mean there is a lot of these oh you're absolutely right not surprisingly the banks are supposed to sell we have the Volcker rules in the US we have capital constraints in Europe and banks historically have invested a lot in these private market assets now the thing is um, we like to stay disciplined despite of that volume that we see in the market because there is a lot of people uh, emerging like some wealth funds for instance that start to get active in this asset class too and that start to buy actually also from these banks for instance. Um, so compared to 2009 and 2010 when we have been extremely active in the secondary market at uh, very very significant discounts to fair values, uh, today I would say we're very disciplined uh, we do invest, we do find secondaries that are more attractive than primaries, but I wouldn't generalize that the secondary market in itself is just much more attractive anymore. I think the picture is a little bit more mixed these days. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And um, I would like to turn um, to our final questions um, with the request for very short answers, okay. either yes or no, black Try and white. Try very hard. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> Um, would you say, generally speaking, that private companies are better run than publicly listed companies? No, they're definitely run, and more in the long term. Okay. Um, how much will private markets outperform public markets over the run of the next five years? In a bad environment, up to 10% per annum. And um, with all this liquidity in the market that we just talked about as well, do you see new bubbles forming, and if yes, where? I think there is a risk that core real estate uh, becomes a bubble, especially in the tier one locations in the big cities, London, uh, Paris, New York, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Meister. Very interesting talk. And thank you, everyone, for joining us again for CFO Inside TV. I hope it was as interesting for you as it was for me to um, have a bit of insight into um, Partners Group's investment strategy and insights into the economy and private markets and hope to see you again next week for our next edition of CFO Insight. Thank you very much.